sweet 16. My name is Ria Larice, and I am a biochemistry major. Oh, when I first met you, baby. And uh, my project, I'm working with Professor Lewandowski, and I'm studying the specificity of the allosteric binding site in alpha-3, beta-2 nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. Oh, you just left your home then, baby. Ooh, the sweetest thing I'd ever seen. I don't even think that I quite realized how much influence I would have over my own project. Or I got to look at the mutants myself, I got to look at the gene sequences and, you know, decide which amino acids I wanted to alter and which amino acids I would replace it with. Until I injected my cells and until I started recording them and looking on the screen and I was like, oh my god, there's cell potentiation and then I was thinking, wait a minute, like, nobody's seen this before or, you know, if they have, it's been some of the top scientists in the country and nothing's published on it. This isn't something that you can find in a textbook. This is me looking at my data and looking at the information I've gathered. When I first met you, baby, oh, oh, you were just sweet 16. You're no longer being told what to do. You're no longer being given orders as to how you should operate in lab, you know, what you should be studying, what you should be doing. You have to take responsibility for your own education, which is, I'd say that's a big step. Oh, you know I'm having so much trouble, baby. Oh, what in the world's gonna happen to me? So what I'm doing right now is I'm looking at the role of the alpha-7 nicotinic receptor on REM sleep and how it relates to stress. The title is Two Photon Interference and uh, we are dealing with lasers and we try to understand the basic nature of light, how it behaves. For me it's almost in the border of physics and philosophy. I mean, we love it, <laughs> we do it. I'm doing a gas phase hydrogen deuterium exchange with uh, small peptides. And so we use a mass spectrometer and then we also do some theoretical chemistry, some computational modeling to gain low energy structures um, to sort of figure out how these peptides might form um, in water. So we do it in the gas phase to remove the water um, to kind of see what type of intermolecular, maybe hydrogen bonding or pi cation interactions are going on. We're looking at heat stress in Arabidopsis plants. Uh, there's a, a protein, Rubisco, which is the most common protein in the world, and it's regulated by Rubisco activase. And um, that's the enzyme, Rubisco activase, that we're focusing on. I guess day one of our research, we were doing some bacterial spread plates to grow our, our DNA vectors. And the next day when we came back to check the plates, you know, there was no growth, nothing. And this was, this was like the very first thing we did this summer. Uh, and, you know, the professor showed us how to do it, and we did it our, on, on our own. And so we came back and saw absolutely no growth. I mean, it went, it was <laughs> completely wrong. That's kind of tough. And you're just, like, frustra frustrated about it. But, you know, you still know you're going to work on it, and you're going to make it work. And by the time it works, you're like, yes, I made it, <laughs> just like that. My name is Sam Kalish. I'm a math and physics double major from Crawfordsville, Indiana. The title of the paper I'm writing right now is kind of mixed results in virtual knot theory. We're dealing specifically with spherical virtual knots. I suppose if there, you know, there are many different formulas you could use, and in particular, I'm thinking of one called the Gauss code of a knot. That's the structure where the generalization of the virtual realm takes place. I mean, essentially, in classical knot theory, you're not actually working with pictures. You're working with mathematical objects. You, you abstract kind of all the information encoded in the picture, and, um, and then you can manipulate it that way. And it's a very natural extension to virtual knots. <laughs> you know, mathematician doesn't really care that you can't, <laughs> you can't actually have a virtual knot. It's definitely asking a specific set of questions. 
but the results are very rarely what you expect. I've experienced some, some frustration at times, but it's also really exciting when things really are clicking. You know, you see something and you can't help but get excited, but you, you know, you try to calm yourself down and make sure you're not getting excited over something that's not really there. But yeah, I've jumped up and down a few times, I think. <laughs> The thing about Grinnell students is that we never want to just keep ourselves in a laboratory setting and we'll find ways to, you know, go outside and make sure we, like, interact with people and all of that stuff. For example, I'm doing science doesn't mean I have to take all the science courses. So I'm taking a lot of like different courses, like I'm taking French, <laughs> I'm taking some anthropology, and sometimes I take like art history, humanities stuff. That's pretty fun too. I go to the gym every single day to work out. <laughs> it's like keep your energy, <laughs> preparing for the lab. It's a slightly lonely project. I mean, you have to be in a dark room and like uh, covered it with tents and boxes and seeing nothing than small red dots. Honestly, when you're really excited about what you're doing, being in the lab, you don't even notice the time go by. You're just doing work because you really want to see what you're getting. Like right now we're trying to analyze data and I'm so content just sitting in lab, like putting things in Excel, being like, oh wait, I think I see a connection right there. This is great. And then you talk to your lab partner about it and you both get really excited about something that could possibly happen. That's the thing about research. There, there are very big highs and very, you know, low lows, but when it's good and you're going and, and you think you're onto something, you know, you just feel like everything's right. <laughs> yeah, it's so cool. <laughs> yeah, that's science. <laughs>